All right, well, this is the web interface for the Trend of Altitude. It doesn't have an on-screen GUI, so everything that you're going to change is going to be done through the web browser. To get that working, all you have to do is pop in the IP address of the Altitude, backslash, backslash, vnc.html. And then that'll bring you to this page here. This is the home page, the main page. Here on the left, you can see your master level. You've got volume up, down, mute. And then underneath that, you have your inputs, which is your sources over here on the right side. So as you can see here, I've already got a few sources renamed. I got my Zipidi, got the Apple TV. I got the Blu-ray player and the Cloud Escape. And then uh, you can see here, this is also Rune Ready. So if you're an audio guy, this is Rune Ready as well. So we are on the Apple TV, Apple TV right now. If I was playing something, it would give you some uh, source properties here. It would tell you if it was in Dolby Atmos, DTS, 5.1, PCM, what have you. And let's say we're listening to two channel right now, which is PCM. You can actually upmix that here if you wanted to. You can upmix it to like Dolby Surround, Neural X, Aural 3D. You can play it back natively. You can upmix it on native. There's this legacy option and then custom is grayed out right now so under manage you can manage what each decoder does so you get a bunch of uh, different options here for under Dolby which if you have a receiver or, or another pre-pro a lot of these are pretty much all the same um, you can surround turn on the surround up mixer you can en enable the center spread loudness management you know dynamic range compression all that same thing for DTS and then for Oro 3D there is a couple options here to upmix for Oro 3D content um, the Oromatic preset you got different size rooms for that for a different effect small medium large speech you can adjust the uh, effect here as well and then under general you can have a default of mixer be present if you're listening to whatever it is that isn't natively Atmos or, or DTSX. So you can automatically have it just up mixed to Dolby Surround if you wanted to do that. And then under, let's back out of this. We can go over to the output tab here. This is your video input section. This will give you all the information for your video source that's coming into the Trinov like color depth, space, resolution, so on and so forth. You can click on video output one. This is for HDMI out one, video out two. So that's a HDMI out two. This is what's coming through to your display. For setup, by default, these are all gonna be on HDMI, HDCP 1.4. If you wanna get this working with your 4K sources HDR, you will have to manually switch this to 2.0 and then turn off the trim off to reboot it and then start it back up for it to take effect. So if you're having troubles wondering why your 4K is not working, you might have missed that step. So make sure you check that. And this is your EDID information input and your output. If you're having problems with maybe getting a poor signal or no signal, maybe hit this refresh button that might get things working again. Otherwise, I would go back and check your sources to see if there's an issue there. All right, so let's get up out of here into the optimizer tab, which is on the left. Here you can just switch on or off the optimizer once you run it. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can do that if you want to. But you can turn that up back on. Underneath that is the acoustic correction. So if you wanted to turn off the room correction, the audio correction, but just keep the level alignment and the time delays you can keep those active and or you can just turn on the room correction and turn off level alignment and delay so you can run any combo here that you want to do then underneath this is the turn off remapping option you can have none auto root depending on what you're listening to 7 channel or Atmos 2D 3D which is for at most immersive content. 2D is for like 5.1, 7.1, everything that's not natively immersive. And then we've got manual. Right now I've got it turned off. And of course we'll touch on 3D remapping later on 
during the settings here. Next tab here on the left, we got clock. This is uh, your clock information. Underneath that, you have your network information, your Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and if you are connected to the service, to the Trinov audio server. Info, you can see that there is an update available. Right now, I'm on 4.2.16. It looks as if there is an update, which is 4.2.16.4. And this will give you the release notes on what has changed. So this is new to me. And then you got your basic info there. You got your startup, your default preset. So if you took a couple of measurements, and you want to pick a measurement to be the default. You can select that there. Your max volume as you turn it on. Your dim level for the front panel, the front panel light. You click that on off. And then your language for the on-screen keyboard. So you got a few different languages here. All right, so next thing we're going to do is go over to the channel assignments. So this is where you would set up your your room. So as you can see here, this is my specific layout. So if we go over to small view, this will give you all my channel assignments here. So let's say my left speaker is assigned to output number two on the back of the altitude. If it was assigned, let's say I have my left speaker hooked up to channel to output 24, I can assign that there. So on the back of the altitude, all the outputs are just numbered. They're not actually assigned left speaker, center speaker, right speaker. So it's freely assignable. So wherever you plug in your speaker, you plug it into to say output 24, hit the pink noise just to verify that it is in fact coming out of the left speaker. And then you can lock it down and just in and just make sure that it is left left front and so on and so forth for the other channels so it's flexible in that you can set this up any way that you like with any number of speakers up to 32 or 24 or 16 whichever whichever model that you have also here is channel assignments per codec so let's say you wanted to add another speaker Let's go click Add Speaker, select the layout. Let's go Oral 3D. So now we're going to go choose a speaker here. Let's just say Top, add that. That'll show up here for Top, which is going to be this speaker that just popped up. So let's say let's remove that now. So we're just going to remove that remove that speaker that now disappears so which is which is the voice of God speaker so if we add that again top now it's illuminated yellow click the add button now it shows up there once you click on it you'll see here the list of speaker outputs it's now illuminated red there and it's also lit up yellow here in the top so for here, for Atmos, there is no top Voice of God speaker, so it's none. Under Dolby, Dolby doesn't support a top speaker, so that's none. Under Oro, it does support it, so it's uh, assigned to be the top speaker. DTS-X, it does recognize it as overhead instead of top, so it's, it's labeled overhead, so it does read it in Dolby, or in DTS, rather. Same thing for regular DTS. But if you wanted to assign that speaker for... Under Dolby, you can have that function as, let's say, right top middle. You can click that, and now that specific speaker would be right top middle. Even though that wouldn't make sense to do, but that's where you can assign it to do something else. So if you wanted it to be under, under regular Dolby, you can make it be left top rear. So this is where you can assign it to do whatever you would like it to do. Obviously, you wouldn't want to do that, but there's flexibility in, in your channel assignments. But we're just going to remove that, though. Let's remove that. You can also change the type of amplification that you, that you want per output. Right now, I'm only using it as a single channel out, which is a mono amp. You can bi amp it, you can tri amp it, or quadra amp it if you have a really elaborate system so you can change that there this little button here is the PEQ 
So if you were to run Roomy Q Wizard and took in your measurements, you can add that here in this section here, and you can copy that to all the speakers if you want, or change it on a speaker per speaker basis. Like I said, this is the little pink noise button, so if you want to make sure that your your entire setup is correctly labeled and set up, hit that and it will play a little pink noise through the speaker. So let's go over here, click large view. So now we have a big, you can see here that this is kind of a 3D representation of, of your home theater. You can change the angle by doing that here. You can rotate it so you can see different angles. Hit the reset button, it'll go back to the normal view. Under dimension, you can enter the size of your room, width, height, length, your screen width, if you've got an IMAX screen or something. Uh, these settings here have no bearing on the measurements. It's just a visual representation, just for your own pleasure. Then under monitoring, this is the Dolby Atmos viewer. I will leave a link at the uh, at the top right screen here if you missed that video, but that'll show you what the Dolby Atmos viewer is. Basically, it shows you what speakers are active and if there's any kind of movement, sound effects movements, moving moving around in your in your audio soundtracks for Dolby Atmos. It's a pretty cool feature. So check out that video if you missed it. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is go and run the room correction. So this is very much like you would get on an Odyssey receiver or Direct Live. This is the user, the very user friendly Trinov optimizer. So let's say we're gonna start a new configuration or we're gonna continue on an existing configuration. Let's say we're gonna go existing, which is the one that we have right now, which is already set up for us. Here on the right side, you can see that it does give you some tips and tricks on what these specific settings do. We're gonna close that. And you can see I continued off my previous my previous setup here. So this is all already set up for me. So we're gonna go ahead and click on next. Now this is your base management screen. So right now we are in the quick setup. We're actually gonna turn that on. So by default, it looks like it's off. We're gonna turn that on. This is the quick setup mode. Let's say everything you wanted to start at like 80 hertz, you would input 80 hertz there or maybe 70 hertz. Click that. You could change that to like 70 or whatever you want. So we'll make that 70 hertz. You can select the type of filter that you want to apply to this. So you can change your slopes. And let's say you want to do all the speakers. So you want all the speakers to be crossed at 70 hertz. Click select all. And since I have subwoofers, five subwoofers, we'd select all. Click apply. So now everything under 70 hertz would go over to the subwoofers, to all five subs. If you want to go into the individual setup, for instance, let's go to left or right speaker. So we'll click on right. You can see here, this is a right speaker. So if you wanted to take bass under 70 hertz, and let's say we're going to send bass only over to sub two, we could check off all the other ones. And at 70 hertz, everything would go over to sub two. Let's say for the center speaker, let's say we just want the bass going to sub three, which is the subwoofer that I have underneath my center speaker. So everything under 70 hertz would go over to subwoofer three. Now, let's say, let's go over to one of the surround speakers here. Let's go over to one of the height speakers. So left top front. So for instance, let's say we want to go, we want to send this to all four subs, all five subs. But if you want, you can click the little plus sign here. So instead of going over to the subwoofer, you can click the nearest speaker, which would probably be the left front closest to it for me. So you can click the left speaker. So now everything below 70 hertz is going to go over to your front left speaker. Or if you just want to send all the bass over to the 
right rear surround, you can also do that as well. So you can red redirect the bass anywhere that you want before it hits your subwoofer. So if I was going to go, let's say, let's say this is only good till, I'm going to cross it at 120 hertz. So everything below 120 hertz is going to go over to that front left speaker there. And then everything from there is going to go over to the subwoofer. So from 70 down is going to go over to the subwoofer. So you got a bunch of different crossover features here within the altitude that I have not seen in another pre-pro or receiver before. So you got a lot of flexibility options as far as bass management. So that is pretty cool. Then under LFE, we've got, you can collect, you can select any one of your five subs. By default, it's set by 120 hertz. And there's also, and then by default, there's a plus 10 dB on the LFE input. And then you can also do, there's some correction here. If you have like a rel, a rel stack setup, you can, you can uh, choose that option here, which would optimize base for like a, a subwoofer stack. So once you get that all set up, we're just gonna go back here and just click, let's just reset everything. Select all, select all, click apply. I'm gonna click next. And before you get this started by straight out of the box, the default is gonna be V8 for your calibration for the altitude. Within the box, there is a USB stick, which is gonna have the calibration file for your unit. Once you plug that into the back of the altitude, you're gonna import the calibration file. For my unit, this is the V9. So you would click import once you put the USB flash drive in it, you would see like whole screen with a mic calibration. You would select that one, and then it would automatically get imported into the altitude. So every time you do this, make sure you always check that you have the correct one. So don't choose V8 or whatever came by default on your unit. Make sure you, you select the, the correct cal file. So you're gonna plug in the microphone in the back. You're gonna click next. You're gonna to wanna to click, you're gonna to wanna to position the microphone in the center in the money seat in your main listening position. There's a red light on the front of the microphone that you wanna to be pointing, pointing dead center at the screen. You wanna be sure that the microphone is level as well. Because if you notice that there are four capsules on this microphone, so it measures space in 3D. So if you have it tilted in one way or the other, your measurement's gonna be off. So you wanna make sure that the microphone is perfectly level. It's measuring the 3D space so it can perfectly find where each one of your speakers are in your room, which is very important for the 3D remapping feature. So once you get that perfectly aligned, you're gonna go ahead and click next. Be sure you plug in the mic, turn on the power button, click next again. All right, so the screen here is where we're gonna be setting up our calibration level. So you're gonna to wanna to get it till it indicates 80 dB. So we're gonna go ahead and click start. Right now we are at 59, so we're gonna go all the way up to 80. All right, so once we hit 80, we're gonna go ahead and click on next. This is gonna give you some more calibration tips here on the right side. We're gonna go ahead and click close. Then we're gonna go ahead and click calibrate. You can also add more measurement points here as well. So if you wanted to add a bunch of these, you can add measurement point one. Measurement one is always gonna be like your main seat. And then you could do like different seats within your room or different parts of the room here. You would just keep adding measurements here. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and click on calibrate. All right, so now that we get the measurements done, it's gonna kick you back out to the main screen. We, we can now go into the optimizer settings. So under here, we're gonna to go to Optimizer Graphs. This is gonna give you the graphs of everything that the altitude just measured. We've got amplitude, amp direct, you got phase, group delay, and you got impulse. So under amplitude here, if you wanna check out your measurements, you can see here that I've got subwoofers one, two, three, four, five checked. So this is the before, and then here we have the after graph. So if you just want to go and you can isolate any one of these if you want to check out your before graph. You can limit that to uh, let's say 10 to 300 hertz. So that kind of just isolates your subwoofer frequencies here. 
that's the before that's what it looks like after and this is the filter that was applied if we want to go ahead and just click on our left right and center just check out those you can check out those as well so you can group any one of your speakers together since my speakers are, are identical it looks almost identical the same here all these measurements and then the correction is pretty good as well across the board and if you want to just double check here to see where your speaker starts like rolling off so here I'd say it's about what like about 50 60 Hertz or so um, you can go in and then change your crossovers again for your base management if you want to take a look at this and then change your base management afterwards or if you wanted to use room EQ wizard and you know how your speakers perform you can always set your crossovers there as well but this is a little a good guideline to see how your speakers are reacting in your room and this is the optimizer graphs let's go back to the home page here so this section here very much like the the regular nicer looking GUI this is your import input source selection this is your input source selection so you can directly choose which input that you want from here there are some meters this will show what you're listening to these these meters will move up and down depending on what you're listening to whether it's a 5.1 or Dolby Atmos or a DTS X material and then it'll show how active that particular mix is and then what it's outputting out to your speakers so if you want to know how active your height speakers are or if there's surround information happening this screen here will show you what's actually going on again there is a little video with the with the with the optimizer and then this graph here that I'll link at the end of this video so if you want to see this in action that's where you can see that next source here this is a source configuration so this is where let's say for HDMI 1 if you wanted to rename your source I named it Kscape for Kaleidoscape you would name that here enter and then you can choose all kinds of other settings here depending on what you want that output to do you got clock you got output connectors digital in channels you've got all these here filters once you choose whatever you got to choose you change click the little save button next tab here these are the this is the optimizer settings again this is where you can turn on and off your optimizer for settings here we've got a bunch of settings here there's going to be a bunch of settings that I wouldn't mess with if you didn't know exactly what they do so this goes back to if you're not like a professional calibrator you don't have the the proper measurement tools or calibration tools then I wouldn't mess with any of these settings that we're going to get into here and most of these settings I myself have no idea how to how to change so I'm not even going to try to elaborate on it but this is a uh, acoustic correction settings here you can optimize for amplitude amplitude and phase just amplitude low range only according to your left and right speakers and then back to amplitude and phase if you, whatever settings you want to change you can change that here um, this is a 3d remapping again under advanced settings all this stuff here I wouldn't mess with any of this stuff I mean we've got acoustic correction settings calibration settings optimize according to a left and right speaker settings you got your FIR and IIR settings level alignment settings subwoofer low pass filter settings decimation settings advanced FIR settings all right so if you don't know what any of these settings do I wouldn't touch any of this stuff so the next tab is going to be the target curve so this is the curve that John from Trinov had applied to my system to give it a little boost on the low end you can change this to have however you want so if you wanted to boost it at like 90 Hertz or wherever you want to do you can change that here you can apply whatever curve that you want that's gonna sound best for your room let's just clear that out because I don't want to save that so once you do that then you would uh, you would click apply settings but I'm not gonna apply that I'm just gonna keep that as as that and then under here we've got your excursion curve so this is where you can actually limit to what the correction 
can apply to your speakers. So let's say we want to add a point here. So if we want to do that, we want to limit it to only 1K. We can do that here. So add a point and then we can move it. So now we're just limiting we're just going to limit it only to, to 1K. So the green part here is what the room correction is applied to, and then this is where it's going to stop. So you can change this to however you want. You know, if you know what, exactly what you're doing, you can do that. Um, for me, I kind of had it limited to about 5K because I, uh, I felt I wasn't getting good enough detail on my top end, so I, I kind of limited it to a certain frequency. And that's your excursion curve. So pretty cool settings. Next up, we have the positions graph. So once you take your measurements, this is going to be a representation of what your room layout looks like after, after it's measured. This is the top view. You can scale that up or down, depending on what you want to do here. There's the elevation view. So you can see here, I'm... Looks like my microphone was kind of tilted a little bit to the left. You can see it kind of slopes upward towards the towards the right here. Since I did a quick measurement, same here. You can see it kind of slopes up to the right, so not exactly perfect. You can see here that my center channel is... I have the microphone aligned just about perfectly here, but it was tilted a little bit. And then this is going to give you the summary of your elevation, your azimuth, distance, your delays, all this stuff here is going to be a summary of every of the measurements for all of your speakers. Then next tab, we've got the calibration. So if you want to do this manually instead of doing it through the uh, the pretty user interface, you can manually do the measurements on this page here. All right. So the next tab, we've got the processor tab. These are the meters once again. This is the master tab. I wouldn't, these, these are other settings I wouldn't touch unless I know you know what you're doing. Input, this is where you can change your input gain. You can click, let's say, solo for the left surround. You just want to play sound out of that particular speaker only. Click solo so you can isolate that channel. If you would just want to mute the left surround channel, you can do that. If you want to play a sine wave through it, hit the sine button. Pink noise, if you want to make sure, if you want to check your levels, you do pink noise or make sure a channel is, act, is active, hit the pink noise button. This is a new feature here. This is the pulse button. So this will help with subwoofer alignment. So let's say, for instance, we want to align our subs. We click on pulse with like the center channel or maybe your front channels. Then we would click on pulse for the LFE. So now you're going to hear this click come out of the center speaker and then a click come out of your subwoofers. Now we're going to go over to outputs and we're going to isolate let's say subwoofer 1. So we'll just click on solo. So instead of having the center speaker playing and then all five subwoofers playing at the same time, we're just going to isolate subwoofer 1 and now we have the center channel clicking at the same time. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the subwoofer and the center channel click at the same time. And if you want to adjust that here, this is output delays over here in the, on the tab on the left, you can adjust the, the delay here in milliseconds in either one, one or 0.1 increments. So once you get that dialed in, you should hear one solid click. So that way your subs are aligned with your front speakers. But let's go ahead and turn that off. So that is a pretty cool feature. Next, underneath Pulse, we've got Input EQ. So if you want to input some EQ into that specific speaker, you can do that. And you can link certain channels together if you want to do that as well. And then for outputs, pretty much the same stuff here. You can inverse polarity. This is your FIR EQ. You can do per speaker. 
preset EQ. If you've set a preset EQ earlier, you can do that here. And then you got your user EQ as well. And of course, last tab here is your output delay per speaker, per channel. Next up, we get the setup tab. This is going to give you your active source, active crossovers. Again, pretty in-depth stuff. I wouldn't touch that unless you knew what you were doing. You got your clock. Config editor. I believe this is for the Trinov text, so I wouldn't try to mess with any of this because you might do some damage. And then we've got your network settings, system status. And then finally, the last tab here is your presets. So every measurement that you take or everything that you change, you can say click save and preset four, give it a rename. Once that's done, if you want this to be your default, click on default, or if you want this one to be your default, click on default. If you want to lock it so you can't make any changes, then you can lock it down right there. So that's pretty much all these settings in a nutshell. Like I said, a lot of the stuff I myself have no idea how to change, but there's so many settings in this thing that you can tweak this to your heart's content. If you are a pro calibrator, if you are a really diehard enthusiast that you have all the measurement gear that you know exactly what you're doing, then any one of these really deep settings should, uh, should keep you busy for hours. So that concludes the quick walkthrough of the altitude settings. If you want to check out the full review, I will have another video separately from this one, just to keep everything separate and within a reasonable time frame.